Uh, oh, I made it on time, more or less. Uh, hi there. Hello again, everybody, and welcome once again to Cast Iron Wednesday. <laughs> Every Wednesday, it seems like uh, we are, well, uh, following this uh, YouTube tradition here of uh, doing something with cast iron on a Wednesday. Nice and simple. And um, <clears throat> as you know, it is only two days before Christmas, the big day. And um, because of that, I mean, naturally, of course, we've got to prepare a Christmas dish. And I was thinking of, you know, we could do the usual that they do for Christmas, you know, the eggnog and the uh, fruit cake, which we already did. Um, as well as maybe things like a roast turkey, but I did that for Thanksgiving. And then it occurred to me, uh, there is one French dish that I first tried a couple years ago and really, really enjoyed. And that is uh, what they call tortillere. Yeah, like everything, there's a fancy French word for it, when it, essentially it means meat pie. <laughs> Basically, uh, tortillere is just that. It is a uh, meat pie, a pork pie, actually, made in a uh, traditional uh, old-fashioned style. And it's uh, commonly served on Christmas Eve or during the uh, Christmas celebrations. And frankly, this is one of those traditions that really deserves a heads up because, oh, this is this is a really wonderful dish. And I highly recommend it for anybody who uh, wants to give it a try. My understanding is it started in uh, France, then migrated to uh, Canada. And from Canada, it kind of migrated to uh, us folks down here in New England. So it seems some people in New England know about it at least. But as I said, if you've never, if you've never tried a pork pie, then uh, again, this is certainly def something worth uh, looking at. And for that matter, um, I renamed this uh, chat tonight just from <clears throat> Cast Iron Wednesday to BSNR Cast Iron Wednesday because, as it turned out, I found that there's an opportunity to look at a few uh, unusual pieces from, uh, well, probably my favorite vintage foundry, Birmingham Stove and Range. I mentioned one, but there are a couple of others we're going to be starting with tonight. Uh, and for that matter, I better get started because... <clears throat> well, it's this is a pork pie, right? Which means, of course, you got to have pork in it. Now, the traditional recipe for tortillera actually calls for ground pork. However, a couple of years ago, I didn't feel like uh, cooking all that stuff at night, and so I decided to take the time. I decided to prepare in advance and do a pulled pork instead. And man, did that ever turn out good! <laughs> so <clears throat> that's what we got here. I've been uh, slow cooking a big uh, pork shoulder in the oven all day, and uh, now it's time to bring it out, and we will get started. So uh, we're going to start not only with a pork pie, but with a good old-fashioned pulled pork, which means I better pull the camera over and bring everybody on a roller coaster ride again. I know you guys love that when this happens. But considering I'm doing this on a very low budget, and I don't know how to do things like switch cameras in YouTube. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to uh, deal with this for a few seconds. As always, I appreciate everyone's patience with this. So we got a nice trivet here and I better move this out of the way. So here we go. Oh, and by the way, hello, Daniel and Raymond. Miami's on board. Oh, gee, thanks. 73 degrees. <laughs> How nice. We've got a couple of inches of ice out there. <laughs> and let's see what we have. Um, oh, God. I'll move this microphone out of the way. So, again, appreciate everybody's patience, as always. There we go. Hope I'm not pressing any keys. Oops. Whoa. What did I do here? Sorry. Type off everything else. I hit the wrong thing. Google Chrome. Are you sure you want to open 20 tabs? No. All right, there we go with this. Uh, come on. Finally. Gee, all that just took so that I can have room to open, open the oven. This is what they call mise en place, everything in its place. And that's also why they say you're supposed to keep your workstation clean. All right. Well, here we go. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Holy crap. Ugh. Mm. You need a hand? No, I don't need applause. There we go. Oh, that I think you do, actually. <laughs> I 
see you do need a fact check. Yeah. Shit. Hernia check. <laughs> yeah. Right. What was that? Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not my buttons. <laughs> not my buttons. Yeah, come and drop buttons. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, well, here's a good start. Not only do we, yeah, we're starting out with uh, something really good from our from our, uh, Birmingham Stoven range. This is a BSNR number 12 size cast iron Dutch oven. And boy, is this thing a big beast here. The bottom part is a, a century. The lid I was acquired separately is a much older red mountain lid. And, but what we're looking at right now is what is on the inside. Hmm. <laughs> Which, of course, I don't want to drop that. <laughs> We've got ourselves a nice pulled pork here. Now, um, because I really wanted to do this for the, um, uh, do this pulled pork, especially as an ingredient for this meat pie, I was not very fancy with this pulled pork. Nice and simple. Quite literally, you, ju you just plop this thing. Let me move this over slightly. Appreciate that. There we go. And now I can put the uh, this down. Anyway, um, all I really did was take this big pork shoulder here, plop it in the oven, in the uh, Dutch oven, and give it a rub of your basic salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And that's really it. I mean, pulled pulled pork is one of the easiest things in the world, and I just wanted to be as basic as I can with this. Th if this looks a little odd on the top, that's because again it was coated with salt, pepper, and garlic. Um, hi there, Stephen uh, uh, Snazeth, Robert Lozano. Hi to everyone from Texas and 20 degrees here in Bangor, Maine. Very dark. Oh, yeah, I know the feeling, Timber Bear. <laughs> Love me some BSR. Yeah, especially when we see stuff like this in it. So, got to do this quickly because, you know, we've got a lot of work to do here. Here's the nice thing about pulled pork is that you can do things like this. Huh. Skin just comes right off, and no, I'm not going to be throwing out this uh, pork fat here. Can probably use it in another dish. In fact, I'm certain I can. For the record, I did not even add a braising liquid to this. I quite literally threw this thing in the pot and let it stew in its own juices. And as you can see, there are plenty of juices too. I did not even have to add anything to that. Uh, again, all I did was give this a uh, rub of salt, pepper, and garlic, put it in at about 260 degrees, you know, instead of 250 because it's a big piece of meat, uh, for about nine and a half hours. And then here's the result. The result is it's so easy to just take the bones right out. Mm. Oh, yeah. Bones pull right out here. Nothing to it. And it's so easy, in fact, you don't even need to, I mean, I could use forks, but this is so easy, you could even shred this with tongs. That's how easy it is to do a pulled pork. And here's another bone. Comes right out. And I think there's one more piece of bone. And the rest of it, well, again, because we can't waste any time, let's get started on some shredding. Now, this is a heck of a lot of pulled pork, and I need about two pounds of this to go into the pork pie. The rest of it, well, gosh darn it, I'm going to have a lot of leftover pulled pork. Oh, gee, isn't that a shame? So all we really have to do, of course, is mix this up with our favorite barbecue sauce, either homemade or store-bought, whichever you prefer. And we've got ourselves some pulled pork. It's really difficult to do better than that. A little bit more fat or skin, whichever you prefer to call it. So really, it's like... If you've got yourself a pork shoulder, yeah, as anybody knows, I mean, this is, as I said, this is one of the easiest dishes in the world to make in cast iron. I mean, it's almost impossible to screw this up. You just cook it long enough and it falls apart. And you, get, you produce a ton of it. 
mix it in again with your favorite sauces and you've got enough here to serve really all of your family, friends and guests. All right, now let's see if we can get, uh, separate about two pounds of this stuff. Gotta get out another bowl here because I tried to be prepared. I always forget something. Like another bowl here. And quickly gather up about two pounds of this. This is going to go in with about a pound of ground beef. And of course, the other nice thing about uh, cooking this pulled pork in advance is that we know the pork is completely done and will not be undercooked. We will not be undersold or underdone. This is probably about enough right here. And there we go. It's once again, step one. I've just pulled my pork. I hope you didn't mind. And yeah, okay. Got a sample a piece. <laughs> Ooh, hot. Mm. Oh, hell oh, yeah. Even with just your basic salt, pepper, and garlic, you can't lose with this. All right. Now let's get this out of the way. But anyway, as I said, this is a BSR number 12. Um, this is really a monster of, of a Dutch oven. It's no, um, maybe the largest of the kitchen Dutch ovens that I know of. I don't think that anybody ever in the USA made a kitchen Dutch oven larger than this. There have been some camp ovens larger than this, but not kitchen ones. So I get to put this aside. Ugh, holy crap. Ugh. Ugh. I know I keep saying that, but yeah, that's, that is a heavy duty piece of meat. Piece of iron, I mean, with a heavy duty piece of meat. Oh, hot piece of meat on the inside. And that is step number one. All right, let's see, what do we have now? Um, okay, now we get to change our viewpoint a little bit and look at another piece all right now regarding this uh miami hello 20 degrees let me some bsr how many hours did you cook it that that cooked for nine and a half hours yeah i threw it in the oven at about uh 10 30 this morning it's now uh quarter past eight so, from here, we've got to prepare the filling for our pork pie. And, of course, we also have to prepare uh, – did he say if the lid is a Griswold lid? No, the Griswold is a Red Mountain BSR. Uh, the pot is a Century uh, series. The lid is a Red Mountain. It's much older than that, in fact. So, <laughs> okay. Next step, as I said, we've got to start preparing the filling – for our pork pie. I better hope that nothing's happened at this point. Come on. Gotta open up my phone here. Oh, good grief. Three, four, five, six. There we go. Please tell me nothing's happened. So far, so good. Okay, now from here, we've got another uh, fun thing, which as I said is, uh, we are gonna be doing a, uh, this is like a, a Christmas uh, pork pie. So the ingredients are a little bit unusual. We'll be seeing some combination of sweet spices and savory spices with this. I can move this out of the way while we're at it. But for now, we get to start with uh, one part of the filling, which would be, let's see, it's, 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 it's a, so shoulder, appreciate your patience. Yeah, the pastry crust is going to have to come after this. Okay, good. Now we're going to, okay, uh, I got to throw in some cooking oil and then we will finally be on our way. Now, before I start, I guess I better show off this piece here. Hello. Hi. 
Hi, I'm going to better show off this piece here. Now, this is another beast. This is newly restored, and regrettably, I found out it's a spinner, but I'm going to use it anyway. And this is another BSR piece. This is a BSR number 10, in fact. Um, number 10 uh, skillet, 12 and 7 16th inches, which is a very unusual size, I know. That's because during the 1970s, um, BSR actually changed modified the sizes of a number of their pans. Uh, they made slight, slight adjustments. So instead of um, this being, number 10 being tw um, 12 and 5 eighths, it is now 12 and 7 sixteenths. And that's how we know it's the uh, later 1970s, maybe even 1980s. Yet interestingly enough, it does not have a made in USA mark on it. So that in itself tells me a couple of things. Namely, it also says that um, no, there was no law that absolutely required every pan made in the USA to have a made in USA mark. They were all done voluntarily as mark, uh, by the uh, foundries, you know, in order to increase sales. And why they did not put the USA mark on this? Well, they're probably marketing reasons. Maybe they were, for instance... Maybe this thing was made for a commercial vendor or a restaurant chain or something like that. So it really didn't matter to them whether it had a made in USA mark or not. <laughs> How's Jamie tonight? She's doing pretty good, actually. Um, <clears throat> she's had a uh, nice day with her son, so she's uh, just recovering from that. I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, she's doing good. All right, now. Merry Christmas, everybody. Better turn the fan on at this point. Move the mic to you. Put the fan on. Yeah, I think we got it okay. All right, we are nice and hot. And now we get to start with. Some onions. This is not going to take long, is it? Not in cast iron, it's not. Once again. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 well, if there's some downtime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yo, yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's not taking long at all for these things to brown, fortunately. And that's a good thing, too, because I'm trying to be pretty quick here. Uh, I don't want to be up all night doing this, and neither does anybody else. But we've already got ourselves some browned onions, which means our next step is we throw in some mushrooms. Chop these myself. I only need about half of these. This is like eight ounces of mushrooms. I need maybe about four ounces of it. Mm -hmm. And to and to this. I've done this before, but um, this is a bay leaves and some some. Okay, got it. All right. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, and now our next step is, and I'm here, I actually tried to prepare in advance. Got a, a teaspoon of pepper and a couple of bay leaves. And these are only the beginning of the aromatics that are going to go into this pie. Because once we're done here, we're going to get into something interesting. And yeah, BSR, uh, even though this was made in the 1970s, it's got a nice, smooth surface. That's one reason why I was really looking forward to using this. This actually, when this thing had some nice milling marks on it, you know, those swirly marks you see in a uh, cast iron pan that was ground down by the original manufacturer. Now, I know I've said before how, you know, how I am against grinding cast iron pans. No, that does not mean I am against the wonderful smooth surface of uh, the vintage uh, cast iron, which I know 
for a lot of people is a real big selling point. And I agree, it does feel really nice sliding along a very nice glass smooth surface here of a nice big cast iron pan. This, of course, is a great reason to cook in vintage cast iron. Or the modern day ones, you know, the fancy ones, you know, like Field or Stargaze or Finex or all that which again, they use that as a big selling point. And it sure is not taking long for these things to shrink, is it? So yeah, we're doing pretty good here. A couple of bay leaves. I think I may put these, not throw these out yet. I'm sure these still have some flavor left in them. However, at this point, I'm supposed to reserve this. Ugh. So they don't burn. Mm. I'm going to spill this. I've always found pork spouts to be kind of silly. They're never very accurate. No matter what brand they are of cast iron it is. heat and now we get to step I guess you could say step three but let me check a comment or two quickly uh, everything else is faked why not cast iron <laughs> um, that is is cast iron ever faked to look like a particular maker when it really isn't um, well some of those uh, Asian made uh, cast iron pans they do actually seem to have used some of the vintage ones as a pattern to design them. You know, you we've seen those Taiwan-made ones that look like uh, unmarked Wagner, for instance, and even those Korean ones that look like a four-notch lodge. But um, I really can't think of any instances where a manufacturer blatantly manufactured something to, especially to look like an, an absolute imitation of a, a USA-made uh, cast iron pan. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, now from here, get down to the next step. This damn screen lock on my phone stops coming up. Okay, now we get to uh, throw in some meat. You remember the two towers? What? I want some meat. What can we have some of them? Picked up some 8020 today at a local meat market. Two dollars a pound, so I'm happy about that. And since this is gonna be baked in the oven too, I mean yeah, obviously I do want to get this nice and well done or well browned. At least I'm not worried about it being undercooked. Maybe I should get this away from the pan a little bit so that you don't hear quite as much of the sizzle. Not that there's anything really wrong with a sizzle. No need to add any additional oil. As you can see, there's enough liquid here, thanks to the beef. And once again, it's not really taking long to brown this. So even as we're doing this, especially since I'm trying to be as fast as I can, let's throw in this pork, shall we? This will give me a chance to shred this pork a little bit more as well. Ah, and this is where I always think of the Discworld books and our favorite city, Ankh More Pork. Because that's what, every time I think of that, I'm thinking, yep, more pork, all right. I know, I know, lame joke. And I'm, and I'm sure they use that in the books at one time or another. After all, we did see the hog father. <laughs> so this is definitely going to be a meat pie, no question about that. And it's also going to be a nice big one. It's going to be big enough, in fact, to fit into a 10-inch pan. 
It's a 12 inch pan. Who am I kidding? Not even going to be this one. I've got another BSR pan coming, waiting in the wings. I suppose technically I could put it all in this one, but I think you'll like the other one. I'm essentially going to keep doing this until all of the burger is browned, which is not going to take long. I mean, this is warm meat. This is not cold meat. Meanwhile, once again, I'm trying to keep up with any comments here. This casting, oh, good grief. Hold on. Okay. Who's Muhammad Hassan? Is he just some stupid spammer? Well, whoever he is, put user in timeout. There we go. And hide user. Bye-bye. Okay, now that we've done that, hello, Jessica T. Uh, give me some fat, 80, 20, or nothing. Oh, yeah, no, I never, believe me, I rarely, if ever, buy any other kind of ground beef. In fact, if I need, if I need more fat, well, then I will just add some additional fat to uh, 80, 20. Now, back to business here. I wonder if it was a re if that was a real Middle Eastern spammer or Asian spammer or just some uh, local pretending to be in order to try to disrupt things. Besides, my channel is hardly that big, so it's hardly likely that I, that anybody that I was targeted personally. Probably just some random nobody. And having done that. I wonder if he happens to be the person who had a post deleted on the Cast Iron Cooking Group today because he was selling things. Hm. Well, be that as it may. This is not taking long at all, is it? And that's another good reason to cook in cast iron because this is going so quickly. I only have the stove top here heating at medium on an electric stove, mind you. So, in fact, if this was a uh, gas stove, this might even be too hot. Because now we get to add some additional, well, flavorings to this. So, screensaver on the phone yet again. Okay, but let's do this quickly. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, now from here, all right, from here, add ground beef and cook until brown, add pulled pork. Oh, that's where, okay, you know, yeah, now one other thing that I didn't have a chance to get. Sorry again for the delay, but I'm going to this as fast as I can, I promise. Okay, let's see if I'm seeing this right here. Okay, that means from here I've got to quickly add in half a stick of butter, which is not something you expect to see in a uh, hamburger and pork dish, is it? Again, this is kind of like a, it's actually going to be a savory pie. So we add in, we quickly throw in some butter. This is going to help with the next ingredient. Quickly do this. Still need the old here. All right, what do we have here? I support eating pork. Well, yeah, that's another thing, too. As I said, just like Mohammed, whoever, uh, as much as I do not want spammers, I also do no, not want religious arguments on this channel. Namely, and as far as pork is concerned, I am all for eating pork. I am against insulting cultures that, um, that shun pork. That will not happen here. Thank you very much. Likewise, as well, 
vegans and vegetarians. This, I've said some words about vegans, but in general, I will give them their due amount of respect. And I'm not going to go out of my way to insult them. And likewise, on the Cast Iron Cooking Group, if somebody posts a very delicious vegetarian dish, I always seem to have to delete comments where people talk, say things like, bacon, and where's the meat? No, fair's fair. We're going to enjoy pork, and we can also enjoy veggie and other dishes. And that did not take long to mix in. Now that we've done that, from here, da -da -da. And it continues stirring. Okay, now da, 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 and another stick. Okay, fair enough. At this point, we've actually got to put some more liquid in the pan, and that's where we start adding some beef broth. Because we actually do want there to be a lot of liquid in this pan so that the next ingredient is. Oh, hold on. Cat on the keyboard. You get down. cat going on the keyboard but anyway yeah there's going to be a lot of there has to be a lot of liquid so that the next ingredient does not dry this dish out which means after this believe it or not I'm adding another half stick of butter yeah so there's a total of a stick of butter in here a stick of butter New England where we have butter I think they have that in the South, too. And to this, I'll throw in yet more liquid. A little bit more of the beef broth. Because again, we're making a pie filling here. So this is not the same as just simply frying up some ground meat, tempting as that is. All right, what do we have here? 3 a.m. comes early. Good night, Timber Bear. Sorry about that. <laughs> pork rolls. Uh, way back on pork. Yeah, fair is fair. Okay, good. Oh, again, I'm on keyboard. No I think it's about time for him to go in there, unfortunately. Thank you. He's been jumping up on the keyboard. <laughs> I know, it would be nice for you to see him jumping up on the keyboard, and yes, he is cute. But, you know, trouble is his middle name, and I don't want him interrupting the chat. <laughs> Having done all this, I think we are about time for that ingredient that I was talking about. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, and here is where things get a little strange, because to this, we are adding nothing other than a cup of breadcrumbs. To this pie, and that's why, again, we really don't want this to absorb all the liquid and dry it out. And I have found it to be, even after all this, more than once I've found the uh, pie to be kind of dry. However, there's still a very easy way to um, make this a delicious pie, even if it dries out. And that, of course, is to make a gravy to go with it. So at the end, after everything is all done with the pie, you may want to just prepare your favorite gravy to go on top of it. And then you will truly have a delicious pork pie. But yeah, you see how breadcrumbs are soaking everything up here. To this, in addition, now here's something unexpected. We're going to have some Christmas type of spices here, a combination of savory and sweet. What we have here, in fact, is some rosemary, some parsley, ground cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, and kosher salt, which I know may sound like something of an unusual combination. May even throw the bay leaves back in. So this definitely gives this an aroma that you may not expect. You know, it's not just a like a barbecue. It is something completely different from barbecue. But this is quite delicious in its own way. And that's why 
I do highly recommend if you want to try something, look up Tortier, and I have it spelled out in the description of this uh, of this video, um, and see what you think, whether it might be something to make for Christmas or some other time. In my family, and I'm, from my understanding, a lot of families, a lot of people go out of their way really to do things a little different on Christmas morning, which is nice. I remember my mom would often prepare these um, almost like buffet style things that you never see her prepare any other time of the year. Some odd dishes, not quite like this. She really wasn't much for home cooking, unfortunately. But yeah, we would often have a uh, breakfast on Christmas morning that was quite different from any other time of the year. And of course, you know, since everybody would be exhausted from opening presents and everything like that, nobody really wanted to cook. These days, I might say I might say something different about that. <laughs> However, let me see. We may be all set with this pie filling at this point. Uh, and everything is thoroughly mixed together into a thick paste. Oh, yes. Okay, remove it from the pan. And then, okay. In fact, this is really what we are just about done with our pie filling at this point. So, i get rid of these bay leaves one last time. And I know there's another one under there somewhere. And then we prepare the next step, which is the crust. And here is where we once again do something a little bit different. Because this is going to be a savory pie crust. And yes, you can use store-bought pie crust. There's nothing wrong with that. Store-bought pie, cr pie crusts are nice and generic, and they use them with everything, from sweet pies to meat pies. All right, let me turn off the heat here. And um, please tell me, oh, yeah. Okay. The oven is heating up. And I just have to set the oven to 350, so that will not take long. So while this is, yeah, I'll move this over a little bit, get it off the direct heat. Meanwhile, the indirect heat will continue cooking it. And let me see what we have here for comments. At this one, I can even turn off the fan because it's pretty much done with stovetop cooking. All right, what do we have here? Merry Christmas, nice memories. Love a good crust, yeah. He, the crust makes the pie, and here's where, well, things are gonna get, oh, drat. Did I actually forget to put these back in? I guess I'm not done yet. I forgot these, forgot these. Ugh, I am so absent-minded. That was the onions. And mushrooms, oh, my bad. Oh, well. It wasn't too late. Let me pull this over one last time and mix all of this in. So there we go. Now it's going to be a pork pie. And of course, once it's served, you can add whatever spices you want to it. If you want to add hot sauce, if you want, you can certainly do so. Although, since this has a sweet taste to it, um, hot sauce would probably ruin it. But I'm sure you could come up with something. As I said, you can also prepare a gravy to go with this. Picture you know, your typical sausage gravy made with breakfast sausages. So anyway, back to business. Now, we get down, I better quick, looks like I dirtied the counter up a little bit. There we go, so that that way we'll still be able to see the pan. Because, <laughs> of course, you know, it's cast iron. i got to try to keep cast iron in the view as much as possible here. Now, somehow I've got to make enough room on here to prepare a pie crust. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Well, we'll see how we manage it. All right. Well, that means I can move these things out of the way. And these mushrooms. And these things. Okay. 
so far so good. One last bit here. Because yeah, I'm gonna actually have to roll the crust out on this countertop. Unfortunately, my space is limited because I'm doing this live. But I like to think I'm doing the best I can. All right. That may be enough, especially if I move this out of the way. All right. That's a little better. That may be enough room. Now, at last, let's get down to it. Okay, now let's move the view over a little bit. There we go. And likewise, this thing here. Yeah. Microphone out of the way. What I do now. There. Finally. Sorry about all that. Yet again. Okay. Where was that? Oh, yes. That's right. Now from here, pork is already a dry meat unless you go 70 30 mix. Yes, indeed. Well, that's one. As and the breadcrumbs will uh, definitely help to dry it out, too. I do not deny that. As I said, this has turned out kind of dry before, yet I'm following the uh, traditional recipe. So again, I can certainly recommend making a gravy to go with this. But rather than uh, just sitting here talking, let's not waste time. And now we get to add in three cups of flour. Do this. To this, we add some two teaspoons of baking powder, uh, teaspoon some um, ground black pepper, and oh yes, what's up? Oh, okay, sorry about that. Hold on, excuse me. Oh, I'm, no, you could just, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah, that's okay. Gotta get it. I understand. My nose is running, and the, I'm flurry, so this won't get here, here you are. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. No worries. Sorry about that. Anyway, where was I? Baking powder, teaspoons. Oh yeah, that's right. Anyway, okay, this was uh, baking powder, salt, yeah, that's right. Two big, uh, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pepper, two teaspoons of baking powder. And to this, all right, hold on, I gotta always forget something, maybe. Whisk. As I've said a number of times before, it is very important to whisk your dry ingredients. Incorporates air into it. And yeah, we've got pepper in this, salt and pepper. This is gonna be a savory pie crust to go with this pie, especially when we consider that to really thicken this up, we're gonna be using animal fat here. Now, usually when you talk about a animal fat in a pie, we talk, we think of, probably our, one of our favorites, and that would be suet. No, yeah, there we go. Um, I was actually gonna say lard, and I wanted to surprise you on it, but nonetheless, yeah, I know, a lot of people, a lot of people have had a lard pie crust, and you know that it's usually very good, but especially when you put in ground suet, then this is really this really turns it into something interesting. If you only know suet from uh, those bird feeders uh, with the you know with the uh, seed mixed in, then you owe it to yourself. Really go to a nice butcher shop and find some suet. Suet is essentially beef fat, congealed beef fat, and it is much thicker than lard. And however, it melts nicely and it actually combines nicely here, especially when we add um, water to this, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing here. And we will um, get ourselves a really, really thick.
pie dough. In fact, much thicker than the typical pie crust that you might find at the store, which is good. To this, we add a little bit of water. And probably even before that, let's get this thing and start mixing it up. So because of the salt and pepper in this, this is already giving a nice, interesting, savory smell. When it's fresh, suet has no, has no odor, or at least the good stuff does. Um, so this is actually a nice, savory smell to this so far. As I said, mostly salt and pepper. There we go, it's starting to come, come together like you might find in a good pie crust. Oops, oh, that always happens. There we go. It's starting to get that shaggy look that uh, you like in a pie crust. So now that we've gotten to this point, let us get down and dirty and start squeezing it all together. I chopped it up with a knife tonight, and actually I may regret that. Because in previously, I've used a meat grinder to grind up suet, and it mixes in with this very nicely. However, it does still seem to be mixing in okay. Get this out of the way now. As always, I appreciate everyone's patience with this. As I said, I'm really trying to do this as quickly as I can without trying to seem rushed. But really, we are almost done. After all, we are preparing the pie crust. And then after the pie crust, well, obviously, we put a pie together. So thank you, everybody, for uh, sticking around. Um, I guess I should say a little bit more yet about BSNR cast iron. I mean, after all, I mentioned the BSR number 12 and the, uh, BS and the BSR uh, skillet that is sitting over there to, to my right. As I mentioned, there is going to be a third uh, BSR piece as well, and that's what I'm going to actually be making the pie with. And that is going to be a BSR spider. I brought that out a couple of times, and I did a video of that. But here I was thinking that, you know, uh, while I could use that BSR uh, number 10 to do the pie as well as the filling, I thought it might be nice to bring out that spider and uh, have some fun with that so that we will make the pie in that uh, spider. It is a BSR camp spider, which is just that. It's 12 inches. Um, and once I get done with this, you'll be able to see it for yourself. As you can see, ugh, probably still have to add some more liquid to this. Ugh. What can I say? I'm not, I've, I've, as I've said many times, I'm not a professional. Besides, here I am trying to get this done quickly, which I know is really not the best way to manage any dish. Which kind of gives me a lot more respect for those uh, celebrity chefs or any TV chef who does this in front of a live audience. This is not as easy as it looks, but it's still fun, and I very much appreciate, as always, anybody who cares to uh, come along. You know, I think I'll just get my hands all sticky. may actually have to put some more flour in this. Now I may have made it a little bit too wet. Yeah, in fact, I definitely made it too wet. Oh, well. Go from one extreme to the other. Well, at least it's all coming together. My bad for adding more water. 
Well, I don't think it'll take a lot more uh, flour, so give me a quick second. Uh. Come on, you fucker. There we go. So yeah, I think I might recommend next time you do this, use a meat grinder to grind up the suet. I think it does a better job than I did with a knife tonight. However, nonetheless, as I said, this pie crust is still coming together. I can't deny that. All right, still get down and dirty here. That's all I can do. Oh yeah, that's working actually. Turn it through. There we go. Now we are definitely starting to get into a nice dough. Now we're getting somewhere. Once again, thank you for your patience here. Yeah. Let's make sure that the inside is done as well as the outside. All right. Now at this point, I should probably check the comments again. And then we will get down to finally preparing this pie. Hope I'm not, take, hope I'm not taking too long, folks. But hey, it's like we got a nice pile of dough here. Uh, anyone remember that Bugs Bunny cartoon with Steve Brody jumping off the Brooklyn Bridge? And that's the one where he convinces him to go, you know, you, yeah, you really, so as I can get me hands on some dough. And so he ends up going to a bakery and says, I know you got a mess of dough here. Let me have it. <laughs> and you know what happens when you say, oh, let me have it to Bugs Bunny. All right. Now, like I said, just got to. Clean my hands off quickly, check the comments, and then we get to the next step. The next step is, I'm intimidated by pie crust, can be unforgiving. Yeah, I know, I've had some bad experiences with it myself. <laughs> um, if you have a killer recipe, then feel free. Well, I do my best. <laughs> I didn't know Gordon Ramsay was watching the live. Why is he? Well, if so, hi. <laughs> And yeah, feel free to insult me. That is the worst dough I've ever seen. The last dough, the last dough boy I saw as bad as that was back in World War One. Right. Sorry, Keith, but this is not good. Zoltan Vaxi, huh? Oh well. Well, yeah, as you said, if you'd like to uh, do better, please, tr please do. All I can say is, I'm doing my best. And I hope folks like it, which is really all I can say. But now that we've done that, I'm going to roll out the dough. This looks dry enough that I think I can just use the rolling pin as is, which means we've got to separate this into two parts. And of course, and anyway, if anybody wants to use the recipe on their own and, feel, and try to outdo me, which is probably not hard, please feel free. I've said many times I appreciate honest criticism, and if you can do better, please do. I'd love to see your results. Now we get to very quickly roll this dough out here. Nice thing about suet though, is it creates a nice thick, heavy crust that as you can see, is a lot easier to roll out than your typical pie crust. Very easy, in fact. In fact, I gotta put some real effort into this. Ugh. 
Yeah, I definitely I recommend using ground suet because, yeah, we got pieces of suet still in this, unfortunately. However, it is all going to melt in the oven. Suet does melt. <sighs> Melts very nicely, in fact. And, yeah, I think this is the last time I try chopping up suet with a knife. I've done it a number of times before with a grinder and have had excellent results. Very much recommend that. Well, again, this will not be a this will not be a failure though. <sighs> not a failure, he says. Well, don't worry, you'll see. Having done all this while we're waiting, let me come back to this in a moment. And now, finally, after promising so much, it's time to introduce ta -da, a BSR spider. This is a Century Series spider. And about the only way you can tell it's a Century Series is because it has the tiny little number 12 on the bottom, which is how they mark their pans during the Century era. Other than that, let's move the camera over a bit so we can get a good look at this. While we, there we go. While we, there we don't go. <laughs> Try again. Oh, good grief. All the time for this thing to go crazy. <clears throat> I know. I'm sure you're probably just coming here for the roller coaster, right? Ha. Now, from here, trust me, I'm confident, by the way, that the finished pie is going to look okay, despite those pieces of suet in the, um, in the crust. They will melt as it bakes, and I'm going to be baking this at 350. And better believe I will show uh, photos of the uh, finished pie to uh, ensure I am that confident that this is actually going to turn out fine so yeah zoltan if you'd like to keep laughing well please do and then show me how you do it thank you all right now that we've done all that ugh, come on how hard is it to set a lid on this thing thank you now we get to get this and plop it into the pan. Nice thing about this dough being so thick, again, it's very easy to spread across the pan. And uh, improvise where needed. Oh, yeah. Anyway, as I said, BSR made these uh, camp spiders really throughout their entire history. We have reason to believe that they made them in their very earliest days, probably even the early 1900s, although there's no documented uh, evidence of that. Unfortunately, their records have been lost. But all the way from the Red Mountain series, all the way to the 1970s and even 1980s, they were making these, um, I think I can put this closer now. They were making these uh, camp ovens and uh, spiders all the way to the 1970s and 1980s. I think they were the only uh, cast iron foundry left that still made spiders during the 1980s. Of course, on eBay, if you ever come across these things, you have to recognize it because there's no way any eBay vendor will say, this was made in the 1980s. Whenever you see a spider on eBay, it will always, always say 19th century vintage or cowboy chuck wagon skillet, even if it's, and so if you come, come across one of these, well, believe me, this thing is probably a hundred years younger than what the uh, seller claims it is. Of course, just because it's a spider, the seller will be selling it at an outrageous price. There we go. That didn't take too long, did it? All right. Uh, let's check those comments once again and then get down to it. 
I've never cooked with suet, but if one doesn't have a grinder, yeah, exactly. Put the chilled suet into a mini chopper or food processor. That would probably work, but you've got to have a good food processor because this is thick stuff and it's pretty difficult to uh, cut up. Raymond, I just found number nine spider unmarked. Not sure if it's BSR. Did Lodge make spiders? Yes, they did, as a matter of fact. They made them at least up until about, I don't know, maybe the 1930s or so. Might have stopped around World War II. Um, I really am not an expert at a lodge's history. Well, I can't claim to be an expert at BSR, but I do know a little more about BSR. But yes, lodge did make spiders during the uh, 1900s. So cooking is an art, and I'm glad you found thinking, thinking is key. If something is dry and gravy is for taste, not the savior, add less dry ingredients. Well, I'm working on, on that. For this recipe, as I said, it's traditional and... I know, you got to break tradition to make it less dry. However, having said that, I do believe it's finally time to add the pie filling. Where did that, here it goes. Where did that other thing go? All right, I guess I'll have to use this. Oops, let's pull this a little closer. There we go. And we go. Ugh. From one 12 inch to another. And boy, this is heavy. Still hot though. Oh, this is, gotta be careful before this falls. This is heavy, heavy. Mm. Uh. Did it. Oh boy. But we've got a nice 12 inch pie in the making here. And hey, actually, there's plenty of room, too. It's going to be a nice big pie. All right. Now we're finally on our way. So there we go. Oh, man, the smell of this, as I said, with those sweet and savory ingredients, I can't even describe it. It's got a <laughs> sweet and savory smell to it. All I can say is you really, really have to try this at least once. I do feel you will not regret it. Boy, look how thick it is, too. After all, it is a meat pie. Now, let's move this thing aside. Here, move myself back here again. Get started on the uh, top crust. And then we'll finally be ready to go. Ugh. dry this off a little bit and then as best as I can roll out the crust but yes I, I fully agree with what you said about using a grinder or food chopper this was the first time I used a knife to chop up suet and you better believe this was this is the last <laughs> well then why'd you do it live if you weren't sure well why not I like taking chances. Um, they're not, you know, they're not life-threatening chances. I mean, the worst that comes up with is, well, the food may be ruined. However, the food is not going to be ruined. I will reassure you once again that suet will melt in the oven. That's why I'm not worried about it at all. It may not look the greatest, but I can assure you it will turn out just fine. I have little doubt about that. And having said that, Time for the other ball of dough. Anyway, as I said, this is because it is because it's such a savory crust. Um, that's one reason why it's so thick, which makes it much easier to roll out. It really, this is ugh. even though it does require some elbow grease. Ugh much easier than your typical pie dough. And for that reason, I may also recommend using a suet crust. This, is, this crust is so thick and so good. This is what I used when I made a bunt apple pie, an apple pie in a cast iron bunt pan, because I wanted a um, crust so solid it could stand up. And if you check the ingredients of things like Hostess's pie, Hostess fruit pies, 
Well, maybe in the old days, they were made with suet. They may have taken that out, you know, because, of course, they're trying to be politically correct these days. I could have moved this in this direction more. Yes, especially so that it could be firm enough so that after baking, you could, of course, you know, hold them in your hand like a pocket. And yeah, there you go. You see that I can, it's so thick. I can still easily do this without worrying too much about tearing it up. Da, 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 da. And plop. Now, all we have to do is condense this down a little bit. Put this in the center more. Pinch it all together. In fact, I think I'll do it like this. Yeah, that might work. this up against this a little bit and anyway I, I'm, tr I'm trying not to be too long here so if it seems like I'm rushing it's only because you know I do want to get this done in time for everybody to go to bed at a decent hour including me tomorrow's Christmas Eve but I still have to get up for work uh, however look at that we've got ourselves a huge uh, 12 inch tortier meat pie so We do the usual. Mm -hmm. So thick that it's actually a little difficult to make slits in it. As I said, if you want to use a regular pie crust, feel free to do so. Just put that filling together and use a regular pie crust. Or maybe even mix in a little bit of these spices, you know, the salt and pepper in with a regular pie crust. Hi, kitty. Oh, trouble. You're back out again, aren't you? Well, you just get stay away from uh, the oven because the oven's about to open. But nonetheless, we are ready to throw this in. Oh, appreciate everybody uh, hanging around. And wow, it's been more than an hour again. <laughs> However, here we go. And yes, as I said, I will uh, post photos of the finished pie, regardless of how it turns out. That is my promise. Besides, I am still very confident. I'm trying to move this cord here. I'm still very confident that this is, pie is going to turn out just fine. All right. And at last. Oh, yeah, I've got all that. Oh, get down off that keyboard. Oh. I know he just wants attention and everything, but you can't have him messing up the chat. Now at last, here we go. And I've got to do this quickly so that he doesn't come too close to the oven. And bam. Can't oven. Hey, get down, get down, get down, get down. Yeah. This is so heavy. Ugh. Ugh. There we go, at last. Oh, finally. All right, at last. Now we get down to it. Let's just do this part here and say hi to your comments. Thank you, everybody, for putting up with all of this. <laughs> See what we have here. Hey, that looks perfectly moist. Well, I hope so. <laughs> nice pour. Uh, no comment. I will wait and never use a chopper to cut suet. Yeah, I'm. Well, actually, I've had very good luck using a grinder, a food chopper with suet. I've actually used it quite a few times, and it has come out very good. This time, I did not use a chopper. I was dumb enough to use a knife, and that's why it looked the way it did. 
I fully admit my mistake. Even so, I'm still confident this is going to melt in the oven. So that's why I'm not worried about it. Hmm. Um, decent hour. It's gone 2 a.m. here. <laughs> yeah, you are like in Europe or something. Only 6 p.m. on the West Coast. <laughs> Pork pie. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Cray Cray 420. This is tortillere. As I said, the uh, description and the recipe for this are here in my on uh, the description of this video. I've actually made this quite a few times. I've loved it. The one drawback is that it can turn out kind of dry, and so that's why I do feel adding gravy to it certainly helps. As Zoltan here says, gravy is not the savior. That means that the recipe isn't that isn't perfect. Well, maybe it's not perfect, but I still like it. <laughs> um, like how your hair won't fall in. Well, there is that. <laughs> uh, this will be good for sure. How long will you cook? Well, the recipe, if I remember right, this is not going to take very long either course for a thick and heavy pie like this. Oh, hold on. Kitty on the keyboard. Ah. Please tell me I didn't kill the chat. Damn it. Oh, am I still live somehow? According to this, I am. Okay, maybe I might make this work yet. Um, hold on, hold on. Please tell me it didn't. He didn't blow it. Mm. Oh, there it is. Wow. <laughs> Are we still live? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Guess who? Guess what? My cat jumped on the keyboard and I thought he killed the live chat. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Okay. All right, make a cat tortier. <laughs> well, no, fortunately not. He's innocent. He just wants he just wants attention. Okay, if he did kill the chat, I think I would have been a lot more upset. However, <laughs> we're just about over anyway because yeah, all is well. <laughs> no temptation treats for the kitties tonight. Yeah, tell me about it. They go crazy for those treats. I understand they call those treats kitty crack, and you can see why. <laughs> Okay, where was I now? Um, okay, Mac Cat Tortier, you killed the chat, brother. We're still live here. Okay. Anyway, as I said, we are just about done. So how long will it be in the oven? Yeah, let me check that right now. All right. Da, 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 da. All right, according to the recipe on my website, keep it on my website because I don't have it memorized, uh, yeah, plate bake at 350 for approximately one hour until the top is brown. Oh, crap. I forgot the egg wash. Ugh. Okay. We're not done yet. How could I forget the egg wash? Happens every time I, I get so worked up on this that I forget basic stuff like that. Quickly. Ugh. This is precisely why I do not have not bothered ever trying to enter one of those reality shows with the cooking uh, countdowns or whatever it is. There is no way in the world I would survive 
Besides the fact that they would probably insist I bring along a ton of cast iron, especially to make some comedy relief. But yeah, I was, there's no way I could survive one of those. That's Where the heck did my, uh, my basting brush go? Where did the basting brush go? Where the heck did my basting brush go? Good grief. All right. Okay, delays, delays, delays. Sorry about this, folks. Yeah, that's my bad for having only one basting brush. Oh, there it is. Ugh. It's like, I don't want to be a hoarder, so I only have one basting brush, and so when I can't find it, well, this happens. However, nonetheless, really nothing to it, at least. All I've got to do, oh, I'm going to put a couple of drops of water in this, but only a couple, just to loosen this up a tiny bit. You okay? Yeah, Okay. Well, Trouble almost ruined the chat. He jumped on the keyboard, and I thought Ooh. he'd killed it. But we're still alive somehow. So, did, now do people understand why we call him Trouble? Oh, yeah. Day one, you were the one who named him Trouble. Before he even got back to the house, I told you what his name was. <laughs> the second he came in, he was like, what can I pop up? Yeah, well, anyway, I'm almost messed up as well. I put it in the oven and realized I'd forgotten the egg wash. Oh, well, at least it's not too bad. No, it's not. Yeah. And you here... <laughs> it doesn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah, gee, we do have to do all of that pulled pork, too. Gosh, whatever are we going to do with all that? I don't know. Maybe make some barbecue sauce. Mm, there yeah. is that. And then maybe next week on the live, we can do those uh, some spring rolls. Remember that we did before? Possibly. Because those are nice and easy to do. Um, well, and then people get to see it from beginning to end. Well, I've got something in the freezer that you want me to get rid of. <laughs> oh, so if anybody's wondering if my roommate tortures me. So, so far this year, I've been subjected oh, to... By the way, you might want grasshoppers get a little closer to the mic all right so if anybody is wondering what my roommate subjects me to you know he does cook and uh so so far i've been subjected to um was that crickets or grasshoppers grasshoppers yeah i don't know if anybody saw the video check it out it's the april fool's day one yeah quite entertaining uh not only for the grasshopper eating um but my reaction as well um i heard the crunch and my stomach went Bleh! yeah and uh, i couldn't contain it um, and then now there's a whole pig head in my freezer. Yeah, a whole pig head. A head of a pig. A pig head. <laughs> head of a pig in the freezer. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I went out to get the pork shoulder today for the um, for this uh, meat pie here. And I was a local butcher. And I was shocked to see that as they were putting out the... Um, maybe just a bit as they were putting oh this is time by the way as they were putting out the um pork shoulders uh he also put out a wrapped pig head and which meant i had to grab it right away <laughs> so this is the text that i received just so you understand the excitement over the pig head the head of the pig the pig head that's in the freezer i don't know if anybody's clear on that the pig head uh this is the text that i received the text was Hold on, let me get to it. The text was, I went to compare to get the pork shoulder because it's always cheap there. And to my surprise, the butcher was putting out a pig head with the pork shoulders. So I grabbed it. I mean, you know, I had to just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to make you eat it. And you definitely, but you will definitely want to taste. Mm, my reply, a pig head? Yeah, hard pass. <laughs> She doesn't know what she's missing. That's okay. I will, and you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm all right with the missing out, you know? I don't have FOMO on that one. Fear of missing out? No, I'm okay. I will, I'll make it through. All right. And now, for the last time, back to the oven we go. Move this cord around again. 
That's exactly what I'm going to be doing, Miss French Twist. Make head cheese. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Throwing <laughs> 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 up. Okay, now for the Sorry, last this, time. This ten-year-old boy yeah. and me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, very, thank you very much for, for waiting for all this, folks. And again, this is going to be in the oven for about an hour at three fifty. There we go. At last. At last. The meat pies in the oven. At last, we are done. Finally, or will be done in an hour. Uh, huh. Hog jowl is just like bacon, but better. <laughs> Pig head are awesome. Wow, lucky. I always get one and definitely taste it. Best meat of any animal. Yeah, the, the head is actually about the best meat on the whole pig. Oh, and this was, this for, by the way, it's a very small pig head, which means it was a piglet head. So it's young. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. And here is where we were talking earlier about insulting vegans or anything like that. Yeah. They would probably be insulted by what we're saying here, especially since, as you know, just like how they have young lambs and young chickens, likewise a young pig head. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing this. Anyway, um, honestly, I can teach you some cooking. Say hi to your roommate, but think you're great. See you. I think you're great. Well, <laughs> I don't, i don't think I'm great. I've made more than my share of mistakes here. <laughs> However, as I've said so many times, I've had a lot of fun doing it, and I very much appreciate everybody hanging around to watch me screw up here, especially with these since I've started doing these live videos. <laughs> okay, but nonetheless, I do think we are doing... We are about done here because, well, we've done everything we could. I showed off a couple of uh, BSR pans, you know, that 12-inch uh, skillet, that twelve, that number 12 Dutch oven, and <laughs> the 12-inch uh, uh, spider. Yeah, I suppose you could read some Christmas meaning into the number 12, but I'm not going to right now. I'm too tired. It's getting close to time to bed here. So, oh. <sighs> What a night this has been. This was actually fun, and there were no major screw-ups. I do not think that those pieces of suet in the pie crust are a screw-up, because I will show you the pic the photos when this is done. And having said that, let's check the last couple of comments, if any. Los Codrios Carambas. Well, I honestly don't know what that means. Cow cheek is great. Thanks, <laughs> Pierre D. Hmm. And uh, no, it says something completely different. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the cast iron collection. That's also something I'm very proud of. I've got a couple of videos on that. Maybe I should do a live video about it soon enough. Other than, oh, you need those chunks. They will melt. Yes, they will. And thank you for uh, thank you for confirming that. That's why I'm looking forward to this. However, I do feel we have to be getting on here because, you know, it's been almost an hour and a half here. I've got to get to bed soon. Well, I've got to wait for this thing to finish. Then I've got to get to bed. And thank you once again, everybody, for showing up. Here it is two days before Christmas. And, yeah, that's the whole point. I made tortillere. This is a Christmas meat pie. And despite the fact that I made a couple of mistakes, I still very much encourage everybody do give this a try. I do feel it turns out I do feel it is very good, and I am very much encouraging everyone to try it. And having said that, of course, uh, can suet be subbed with lard? You know, I would say you can. I mean, the pie crust, the consistency of the pie crust will be a little bit different, but I don't think there's really too much else. I chose suet number one because it's traditional, and number two, suet is wonderful for making pie crusts. But, uh, yes, a lard pie crust should do just fine. So, yeah, no, I see no reason not to do it. <laughs> and having said that, as really, Miss French Twist says, Merry Christmas to all. And while we're at it, a blessed Yule, too. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Um, 
No, I'm not going to say anything about Kwanzaa only because I think it's a political holiday. However, nonetheless, happy holidays, happy, joyous Yuletide to everyone because good grief has this ever been a year for it. <sighs> and with that, enjoy your, enjoy your holiday weekend, folks. Enjoy, Merry Christmas. And I'll see you again next week. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>